All right, so what we've done so far uh, in section 4.1 and a little bit in 4.2 is we've been doing the indefinite integral. So the indefinite integral is going to, um, yeah, ooh, look at the light. All right, is going to not have itty bitty little numbers right here. So we've been doing the indefinite integral. Well, now we're going to introduce these numbers. And we call it a definite integral because the, the area that we're trying to find is now defined. Okay, so uh, we don't have time to cover the limit process, so I'm skipping it. Um, but just know that in 4.3, we're supposed to be doing the limit process. So if it says that, we're not doing it because, you know, coronavirus. So we are not doing the limit process. That's going to be the long way to do this stuff. So we're just going to go straight to the shortcut. So um, on this first one, our process is going to be the same. I want to integrate 4. And my variables that I'm messing with, or the variable that in which I'm in terms of, is an x. So remember, increase your exponent by 1, divide by your new exponent, which is just 1, so it doesn't change anything. And then we have our plus c. So now what I'm going to do is in, uh, introduce hard brackets, and those hard brackets mean that the integral is done, the process of integration is done, and now I'm evaluating. So my two numbers were 1 and 4, so I'm going to integrate from 1 to 4, and you always go from top minus bottom. So I'm going to evaluate with 4, and I'm going to evaluate with 1, and subtract my two answers. So 4 times 4, so 4 times 4, plus c, so I evaluated at 4, minus 4 times 1, plus c. And now just do the math. So 16 plus c, and then this gives me 4 plus c, but remember you're going to distribute this negative, so that becomes minus 4 minus c. So here's the fun part. When we are doing definite integrals, we don't have to do the plus c's. Why? Because they're going to fall off every time. Every time they will fall off. So from now on, with definite integrals, it's understood that the plus c is there, but it's also understood during the process of evaluation that they're going to cancel each other out. So now my answer is 16 minus 4 is 12. So you just found the area under the curve. So what does that mean in real life? We'll come back up here and let's set up the problem again. We've got from 1 to 4 of 4 dx. So remember, this is your function. That is the same thing as f of x equals 4. Okay? So if I'm going to graph that, that's a horizontal line that slices through the y-axis at 4. And then I'm going to uh, evaluate the area under the curve between the x values of 1 and 4. So here's an x value of 1, and here's an x value of 4. And then this is the area under the curve. So, and remember, it's understood that it stops at the y-axis, or sorry, at the x-axis. Now, what lovely little shape did you make? This is a rectangle, not drawn to scale, with a height of 4 and a width of 3. And what's the area of your rectangle? It's 12. So on this one, we just found the area of a rectangle uh, using uh, calculus. But again, geometry didn't stop existing, so we can use geometry on more basic ones. However, we all know that that's not going to happen. Um, so that is what uh, this section is about. So we're going to keep it basic for the most part. Um, I'm going to try and squish this into one video. So we have uh, the integral from negative 3 to positive 3 of x to the third dx. So just to give you an idea, you don't have to draw these pictures, but until you get used to what we're doing, I'm going to keep drawing them. So that's my cubic function. I'm finding the area from negative 3, and remember it starts and stops at the x-axis, to positive 3. So if I want the area under the curve, well, over here, the top curve is your axis. The bottom curve is here. 
On this side, the top curve is the cubic and the bottom curve is the axis. Okay, so if I want to do this, I'm going to take x to the fourth over 4. And then that tells me with the hard brackets that I'm now done evaluating. So I've got a negative 3, 2 of 3. I'm sorry, I'm done integrating. Now I'm evaluating. Remember, I'm not going to write the plus c because it's just going to fall off anyway. So I have 3 to the fourth power, which is 81, minus negative 3 to the fourth power is 81. So this is the positive 3 evaluated minus, always subtract, the negative 3 evaluated. Well, what happens is that I get an answer of 0. And we're going to kind of handle that later. Right now your answer is 0, but why is that? Over here, since you're under the axis, this is negative area. And since you're above the axis here, it's positive area. And because of the symmetry, it cancels each other out. And so I'm looking at area. There is area there. But um, I'm going to find out later how to manhandle it. For right now, your answer is 0. All right, so this is a fun one. This is taking it from the limit process, which was the hard way. And we're going to convert this into an integral. So first of all, what's our interval? It's from negative 6 to 8. So they gave me the negative 6. So guess what your top number is? It's 8. What does delta x mean? That means the change in x. And in um, calculus, we've discovered that the change in x is represented by the derivative. So that's dx. This is going to be the sum of an infinite number of rectangles. So here's the fun part, OK? Um, if I draw an infinite number of rectangles, so come back here. So between negative 3 and positive 3, I'm going to have an infinite number of rectangles. So there's a rectangle. There's a rectangle. There's a rectangle. How wide is each rectangle if I have an infinite number of them between here and here? Well, the more I have, the skinnier I get, which means your width on your rectangle is approaching 0. Okay, so the change is approaching zero, okay? And so I want the width of every rectangle to approach zero, which is what this is. And then I'm going to take the sum of all of the rectangles together. Well, what does that leave me with? 8x plus 18. So we have 8x plus 18 dx. So again, this would have been the long way. If I had made you use summation and break it all down, whatever, we're, we don't have time. So I'm just going to dive straight over into integration. What you need to understand is that we are adding up an infinite number of rectangles between negative 6 and 8. And the more rectangles there are, the skinnier they are, which means each width is essentially approaching 0. Okay. Um, so now all we're going to do is set this up. Okay, so I want to go from where to where. So I'm going to go from negative 4 to positive 4. And then what is my function? My function is 4 minus the absolute value of x, dx. So we're just going to set a couple of them up. All right, so let's set this one up. Where am I going from and to? I'm going to go from negative 4 to positive 2. And... Um, so here's my negative 4, here's my positive 2, and then what's my function? My function is 25 minus x squared. So we're just practicing right now, okay? Um, so sketch the region. I'm going to go from 0 to 9, So and I'm in terms of x. You can't see. 0 to 9, and I'm in terms of x. Well, this is from 0 to 3, so it's not him, okay? This is from 0 to 3, so it's not him. Okay, this is from 0 to 7, so it's not him. Oh, look, it's from 0 to 9, so it must be this one. Now think about that for a second. This is the same thing as y equals 9 minus x. That's a line with a negative slope that hits the y-axis at 9. So you just drew this. Now, instead of us integrating this, do I know how to use a geometric formula to find the area of this thing? Last time I checked, that's a rectangle. 
So I have area equals half of base times height. What's my base? It is 9. What's my height? It is 9. So I end up with 81 halves. Okay. Um, so this is going to be another one you should be familiar with. Remember that this is the top half of a circle. And we did that back in chapter 2. This is the top half of a circle. And you're going to have a radius of, of 8. So it goes from negative 8 to positive 8. So here's a semicircle. Here's from negative 8 to positive 8. That's an upside down parabola. That's another upside down parabola. And that's another upside down parabola. So it's got to be this one. And then can you find the area under the curve? Well, I want half of the area of the entire circle. The entire circle is going to be pi r squared. I only want half of it. I just want the top half. So what's my radius? My radius is 8. So I have 1 half of 64 pi, which gives me 32 pi. Okay, and then the last ones, I'm going to let you do some um, of these. But here's what we're going to do. These are properties. I have four minutes. All right, these are properties of integrals. So I would like to know if I evaluate from 2 to 8 on x to the third dx. Here's what you need to know. On these ones, you may not use all of them. They're just giving you something to pull from, and then they change the problem down here. So it says go from 8 to 2 of x to the third dx. Well, that should kind of sort of confuse you because the bottom number should be smaller than the top number. So let's see what happens. If I evaluate this thing from 2 to 8, they've already told me I'm going to get a 1020. Okay. If I evaluate this thing from 8 to 2, so when I integrate, I'm going to get x to the fourth over 4. And then I'm going to evaluate from the top number minus the bottom number. So 2 to the fourth is going to be 32. No, it's not. 2 to the fourth is 16 over 4, minus, evaluate by 8, and 8 to the 4th, holy cow, I need my calculator, hang on, 8 to the 4th is going to be 4096 over 4, okay, well, if I reduce both of those, I get 4 minus, divided by 4 is 1024, and 4 minus 1024 is a negative 1020. So here's what you figured out. If you invert your um, limits of integration, which are what these little tiny numbers are, all it does is change the sign. So your answer here is a negative 1020. Okay, so let's do this one rapidly. Um, I have um, from 4 to 6. I know that x to the third is 260. I know that x is going to give me 10, and I know that 1 is going to give me 2. So if I rewrite this, I have 4 from 4 to 6, x to the third, minus, uh, sorry, dx, and then minus 11 from 4 to 6 of 1 dx, x dx, land of Goshen. All right, plus 5 going from 4 to 6 of 1 dx. So all I did was pull the 4 out front, I pulled the negative 11 out front, and I pulled the 5 out front. Well, I already know what this is. This is 260. So I've got 4 times 260 minus 11. I already know what this is. It's 10. And then plus 5, I already know what this is. It's 2. So 4 times 260. 4 times 260 minus 11 times 10 um, plus 10 is going to be 940. So that's an answer of 940. Now, there's one trick because I have 30 seconds left. Look at this one. Okay? If I know that um, the... Uh, so you're looking at two different pictures here. Okay? So I'm going to go from 0 to 3. That's a bad picture. I'm going to go from 0 to 3. And then I'm going to go from 3 to 6. This area is positive. This area is negative. Okay. When you go from 3 to 3, what's your answer? It's got to be 0 because there's a width of 0. And that is 4.3.